All right, let's start with a word of prayer, a little bit of prayer. Father, we just thank you for this day. Lord, I just ask that you would fill my mouth and you would help me say the words I need to say. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so today my sermon is going to be on the law of sin and death. Um, many of us are very acquainted with this scripture. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And the question is, though, what is the law of sin and death? A lot of us immediately think, well, when you sin, you eventually die. And that's a very simplified version of the law of sin and death. And uh, one of the reasons why I want to go over this uh, today is because the other day I was listening to uh, Alex O'Connor, who's cosmic skeptic. He was talking to, sitting down and talking to a Christian. And one Christian asked him, why, uh, what, what's keeping you from becoming a Christian? And he brought up a lot of things that in the Old Testament that he didn't agree with what happened. And he was basically saying that God is too arbitrary, too thing. And I was like, I was sitting, and the, sadly, the Christians didn't really have a response to this. And to me, the response was so obvious. It was the law of sin and death. I mean, it was very obvious. I'm like, why, do, why didn't they, they say that's the law of sin and death? And it, and it became clear to me that a lot of people just don't understand what the law of sin and death is, what it entails, where it comes from, and how it affects us. Now, going back to Alex O'Connor, I, I watched his, his, uh, his cosmic septic. I've watched his, his uh, journey you know, with very sad eyes and very hopeful eyes. See, originally, he was a Christian. And then his parents were foolish enough to send him to a secular uh, school and college. And he went, as, as the scripture says, Blessed is man that walketh not in the counsel of ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And that, it, what happened to him is he walked in the counsel of the ungodly. Then he stood, stood in the way of the sinners. And he eventually sat, and that eventually sat in the seat of the scornful because he was... He walked in their ways, and for a long time, he even bo boasted about how many millions of Christians he'd turned away from God. Now, however, he's beginning to sit a lot with Christians, so he's standing in the way of the righteousness and sit and, and walking with, and ah, I got that all tangled up because there's no scripture, but basically, he started to hang out with Christians, listen to the Christians, and he doesn't sit in the seat of the scornful anymore, but he sits it not quite sits in the path of righteousness, but he's starting to come closer to that. And, but he still, because of his time as being a scornful, he still sees a lot of things in the Old Testament is not right. So we're going to go ahead and, as apologetics, go over what was the law of sin and death and how we can help not just him, but us see, the, see that. So we're going to go ahead and go to Genesis in the very beginning. Uh, let's go. Genesis 3, and this is right after Adam and Eve have eaten of, this, of the fruit. And God said to him, Who told thee that thou wast naked? You see, there starts with nakedness. Has thou eaten of the tree, wherefore I commanded thee that thou should not eat? And the man said unto the woman, who's thou, And the man said, The woman that whose thou gave to me, gave to beest with me. This is the old, uh, King James, so it takes me to get my mouth around it. She gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this thou hast done? And the woman said, The servant beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon the belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Now, right there, we have the first curse of the law of sin and death. To, it, that doesn't really matter to us because we really don't care about snakes crawling on their belly. <laughs> but that is the first curse of the law of sin and death. And that, okay, I lost my place. Okay. And I will put enmity between thee and thy woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his hill. Now there's the second curse of the law of sin and death. Now to death, today, that, the, that doesn't mean as much. But in the old times, that meant a lot. Um, I, Jordan Peterson, someone I follow, and he talks about the scare, how scared humans were of snakes. I mean, there was a great time in history where snakes were a number one threat. Uh, and that makes sense because they're very small. They can get into almost any place. And one bite from them can kill you. 
So <laughs> some, 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 some societies have, uh, were very, very scared of snakes. Even in Japan today, there's places in Japan you can't go because there's so many snakes. I think there's an island, a two-step island or something like that. I can't remember the name of it, but it, they're finally starting to clear it out. But it, you weren't able to go on that island because it's so full of snakes. And unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow in conception. In sorrow shalt thou bring forth children. And so there is the next one. Woman shall have great sorrow in childbirth because of the law of sin and death. And in, in sorrow, sorrow shall thou bring forth children. And there thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. This, and he shall rule over thee all throughout history. Women have been underneath the foot of man, and that's because the law of sin and death. And that is a very important thing, because that's one of the things that Giles Connor brought up. And uh, I've seen a lot of atheists bring that up, is that the treatment of woman in the Old, Old Testament, and that's because of the law of sin and death. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of all, all, all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it thou, thou taken, and for dust to thou art, and unto dust, thou, thou, uh, and dust shalt thou return. So we have two curses there, D returning to dust and having to eat by, uh, basically work by the sweat of a brow to eat. And this was a very true case through all of history. And I believe the stats were something like one out of every five people had to be farmers to survive. One out of every four had to be farmers to survive. And in millions have died to starvation. Every man basically had to work and to work every day, all day, farming the fields while the woman cooked the food or something along that line to stay alive. Now, that's, that's and then obviously we're all returning to death. We're all dying constantly. And now, but that's not the only law. That was not the only law of sin and death. We also jump forward here to Genesis 9. And many of us are very familiar with this story. And Noah began to be a husbandman. This is after the flood and planned his vineyard. And he drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. Once again, it starts with nakedness. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his brethren without. And Shem and Ham Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backwards and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backwards and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants. A slave of slaves, as if you translate that directly, shall he be unto his brethren. And he, sa and he said, Blessed be the, be the Lord God of Sem, and, Can and Canaan shall be his slave, his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant, or slave. So right here, we see another part of the curse of the law. Because of the wickedness of uh, Canaan, not, no, it's Ham, Ham, looking at it, we have slavery. That became a part of the law, and not just slavery, racism, dramatic racism in slavery, because this became a part of the law of sudden death. And from that day, we have that dramatic scene all throughout history, slavery, slavery and racism, dramatically. And in the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, it talks about how slavery should be handled. And it talks, and we also, another thing that uh, atheists will constantly bring up is that God seems very racist in the Old Testament, that he picked his people and everyone else didn't matter. And I've heard atheists argue that. And I'm going to say that's because the law of sin and death. Now, 
when it comes to these arguments, a lot of times that even if you were to bring them to atheists, they're not going to understand. This is also mostly so for yourself. When you're talking to somebody else, the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. So if someone says, well, what about this? That God had them go through and wipe out everybody in Can Canaan. He, that he ki that had them kill man, woman, and children. Well, first off, a lot of people will say that was hyperbole, but even if it wasn't hyperbole, it was because the law of sin and death. That, and it says that they were, they had been laying with beasts, they had been sacrificing children, they had been, they had been doing all this stuff, and the law of sin and death. They had sinned, the law had is come, and it was t time to reap the law of sin and death. Now, as I was saying, atheists usually won't react to this, no matter how you tell them. Some, some will. Some you can reach through apologetics, but honestly, apologetics is more for yourself. So when you're talking to them and they bring up this argument, you have a response. Say, that's the law of sin and death. You do not understand the dangers of sin, what it brings. This is what the law of sin and death means. So that means instead of standing there, like I'm sad to say that happened uh, that on, in this podcast I was listening to, they didn't really have a response to him. And it shook their own faith. And obviously it'll shake, it'll shake the faith of the atheist too, because they, well, he thinks he's got a, a hit on you. So, but if you know and study yourself, so yourself studied approved of God, that you can answer that with firmity. You will not only form your own faith, but it also can then, just by being able to answer in that, you will also able to touch them. A lot of times your words won't reach them, but in the manner you speak, it will reach them. So, now we've come to that and we've come to, there's also other places in the, in the Bible where there is the law of sin and death. I believe Babel was probably a part of the law of sin and death. And there's might be a couple other places that you could say where the law of sin and death was enacted and a new curse was set down. But, but, but there is good news. We have to see here, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And if we go back up through this, these laws, we go here with the curse of man being afraid of snakes. Well, all throughout the West, we're not really afraid of snakes, are we? I mean, a lot of us still have pets <laughs> that are snakes. So that, that curse is probably the, one of the weakest curse. And because of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, we see where, every, where Christ is spread, there's not very much fear of snakes. And then we go to the woman. The curse sees surface from the curse of the law of major uh, pain in childbirth. Many women throughout the year, ages have died during childbirth, but that has dramatically decreased wherever Christ has been spread. That even, even today, you could have a C-section and completely skip the pain of childbirth, which I do not suggest. It's not healthy for you or the child, I don't think. That's my opinion. But it, it, is, it is a truth that wherever Christ has been spread, that pain has dramatically decreased. And then obviously, a woman being slave to a man, that has almost become to an end in the West because that Christianity has come through and wiped it clean. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus has, has taken women from being slaves of the man to being equal with the man, okay? And we're in, the, in places that where Christ has not been spread, like in Islamic nations and third world countries, Hindus, <laughs> Hindu, poor Hindu women, they have to do all the work. <laughs> I've been to a couple of Hindu eight nations and yeah, the women do the work, basically are the slaves of the men and the men sit around and do nothing <laughs> or they try to, but it's, it, you know, and uh, so we see where Christ has been, women have been set free. And then we, this one is crazy when you think about it, that men have to work by the sweat of their brow. Well, wherever Christianity has really spread and taken hold, we don't have to hardly work at all for the by a sweater brown. I can't tell you the last time I had to really sweat besides exercising, uh, except for maybe moving a few things here, but it's definitely not for my food. And uh, not many today have to actually sweat for their, their work. And it, I think it's, I think right now the ratio to farmers is like 41 to 45. Uh, and in some extreme cases, it's got up to one to a hundred for uh, one farmer 
for every uh, for 45 people. And even that farmer doesn't have to sweat that much. I've seen, I've liked watching these gigantic tractors being completely robotic controlled while you got like, I think like three tractors side by side. You've got the one guy sitting in one tractor. He's in there drinking his coffee. It's his automatic factory, uh, automatic tractors just plow the field and plant and, and do the weeding and this, yeah. So, and that is because Christianity um, came along and science came along. Now, don't let anyone else tell you that science and Christianity are at odds because that's not true. Christianity is directly responsible for all science in the world today almost. Every single thing, all we have today is because Christianity, if you look back at all the forefathers, now the, uh, they'll try, atheists will try to twist it and blah, blah, this. I've heard all the arguments. It's a bunch of bull. Christianity is directly responsible for the for the science and technology we have today. Don't let anyone lie to you about that. Okay, so then we come down to death. From dust thou art and to dust thou shalt return. Well, obviously that has not been defeated. And the Bible says that the last enemy to be put underneath Christ's foot is death. I think it says that in Revelations. I should have looked up the scripture, but yes, that is one of the scriptures. But even with that said, um, the the lifespan of man has dramatically increased from what it used to be. Now that has dropped off in the recent years. I think, I think 15 years ago or 10 years ago, man's average lifespan had increased dramatically and now it's starting to drop back down because, well, sadly I have to say that Christianity across the world has lost a lot of its, its power. Christianity has become a bygone in a lot of places and we are seeing the direct result of that death is starting to once again spread and we're starting to see the average lifespan of man to drop because now with well COVID was a good example of that because Christianity which is pushed when Christianity is is the main backer then truth is that what is matters the most and when COVID came along, control was what was mattered most. And we've seen mass death. We've seen uh, mass censorship and stuff because Christianity has lost a lot of its power. And that's a direct result of that. Now, when we go down to the curse I was talking about Noah and the slavery, well, wherever Christianity has been preached, where Christianity has taken power, we have seen the almost complete eradication of slavery and the almost complete eradication of racism. Now, as I said, once again, Christianity has fallen off and we're starting to see in America dramatically increase in racism. And I think now these stats are very hard to find, so you can't quote me on them because I was trying to figure, find them, but I believe that uh, slavery worldwide has increased by almost five times in the last 15 years. And can you believe that? Slavery today. And that's because Christianity has declined. And that's, uh, that's my personal belief, directly responsible for that. So that said, I want to wrap this up real quick to make it real smart. I want to read one last scripture. Uh, Colossus 3, 9. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. See, this is, this is a direct commandment from um, Colossians, Colossians, so I think it's Paul, and he's telling us not to lie. And, but we, and that's what COVID was about. We had just nothing but lies, constantly lies and lies and lies, more lies. And, but we're, if, if we're Christians, we will not lie one to another and have put off on the new man, which renew in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where therefore is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision, uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. See, we see right here, this is part of that same statement that, uh, that with, with, through the life of Christ and Christ Jesus, we all become equal. Before, before men were not equal, underneath the Old Testament. We see that constantly, constantly people were not equal. That the woman was beneath the man, there was slavery, it was, con it, it was actually, uh, there was laws set out in the Old Testament how to, to regulate slavery because it was underneath the law of, the, the, the law of sin and death. Okay, 
Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, putting on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your heart to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns, in spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in the word and deed, do ye all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Amen. So, that's the end of my sermon. I hope this will help you to understand what, what, what the law of sin and death is, what the results of the law of sin and death were, and that's all. Talk to you later. <laughs>